We want you to be specific now as to where you were between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Steady on. They generated something like 18,000 actions, that is, lines of inquiry, which in turn led to 43,000 names going into that system. And what I have to say about the 18,000 actions is that that amounted to eliminating people from the inquiry, which was what the investigation was all about, eliminating armed robbers and eliminating criminals from the murdering fire. Where police had no grounds to arrest suspects, John Thorpe was taken out to observe them. He was shown 9,872 faces, and though his assailant was kept on file, he didn't spot him. Meanwhile, the analytical team, looking through armed robberies, identified two attacks on an Asda supermarket that just might have been committed by the killer of Sergeant Speed. In both cases, witnesses said the gun had sounded tinny. In the first attempt, the supermarket manager was threatened. A shot was fired but the gunman fled without getting any cash. A year and a half later, the store was attacked again. This time, the manager was carrying over two and a half thousand pounds. The manager had been shot in the knee. The bullets from the Asda raids were compared with the murder of Sergeant Speed. They were of a different make and a slightly different caliber, but they lacked conventional rifling patterns. That rare feature meant that they could well have traveled down the same crudely bored out barrel. I want to stress upon you the Asda connection once again. The bullets are very much... Uh, Sir, uh, I'd just like to mention in regard to the Asda connection, uh, the K brothers. There was a robbery at uh, Castleford at a supermarket and they fit the general description uh, of the photographs. And are they resident somewhere in the Leeds area now? I believe so, yes sir. We'd better uh, have a team of officers, uh, Mr Grubb, to have a look at these two and any of their associates just to see if in effect they are the two people that we're looking for. Stephen Caird worked at Astor this is where two offences very similar to the John Speed uh, murder taking place, the same weapon had not undoubtedly been used. Uh, Stephen Kerr had left this firm under a cloud and his brother Richard looked identical to the gunman at the scene, so we were very interested in these two men who were extremely violent men, very greedy men and professional criminals. The Kay brothers' home was put under observation. One, two, three. All officers stand by. The three suspects are entering the target vehicle. It's an off, off, off. Eyeball. Yeah, eyeball. We're uh, half a dozen cars behind them. They're coming up to the roundabout. Not the first. Not the first. Car 221, we're coming up to the junction with Marley. Car still heading towards Wakefield, over. Yeah, I got you. And it's pissing in here. Car 2 on, come and take us now. They've had a good look at us. Yes, we just come up now, over. This was no ordinary outing. It took them way out of their territory in West Yorkshire, over 60 miles towards Middlesbrough in Cleveland. Now we've got a high ball with one car cover. 2 to on, go. Speed is off as the light. Yeah. They're speeding up a bit, Shh. heading out towards the motorway. Is he doing it? Shit, he's jumping the lights. He's gone. No, he's in that. It's a car too, we've lost him. Okay, there you are. Three of them. Right, car one to car two. We've spotted them. In fact, they're splitting up. One's going up towards the town centre. 
other two have gone left. Yeah, from car one to car two, can somebody check with the local lads and see if there's anything gone off in the last half hour? Something had gone off. There'd been a robbery. Milgar control, whiskey two three receiving, whiskey two three. Look out to Whiskey 2-3, can you go to the A1 southbound via the A58? Intercept a black Ford Capri motorcade. On the road back to Leeds, West Yorkshire police prepared an armed reception. Here it comes. Yeah. Go for it. Driver of the black Capri, pull over, pull over. Driver of the black Capri, pull over, pull over. Stop then, he's giving up. Driver of the black Capri, we're armed police officers. Can you hear me? Switch off the ignition. Throw the keys out of the driver's window! That's good, now put both your hands outside the window where I can see them. That's good. Driver out of the vehicle. Turn to me. We require to speak to you in connection with an armed robbery. Walk towards me slowly. Keep coming. Stop. Down into a kneeling position. Now lay down, flat on your face, and keep looking at me. Arms out at the side of you in a crucifix. That's good. You'll feel slight pressure on your neck. I won't hurt you. Richard Kay, put those hands on the table and listen to me. I'm Detective Chief Inspector Grubb from the West Yorkshire Police, Detective Officer Muff. We're arresting you for a robbery for? for a robbery in Millsborough early this afternoon. You're not obliged to say anything. Anything you say will be given in evidence. Come on. Although I never saw the case, any photographs of the case or anything, I, you could tell by the atmosphere that was building up. People were talking in hushed groups in corners away from me and things like that and uh, I knew that the, the two people were being interviewed and uh, of course the excitement starts building up you think you know there's something going on they've, they've got them. Richard you've been followed all day every bit of the day there's been a surveillance team on your back all day and we know exactly where you've been well if you know every move I've made then why are you bothering to ask me where was Richard was not Richard with you at this particular time it's the care, your no, brother. No, no, no. You were seen this morning to come out of the house with Terry Early. Your Stephen picked you up in the Black Capri. You set off up the A1 to Middlesbrough where you did a robbery. Did I? Yes, you did. Well, if you know all that, then you'd better do something about it, hadn't we you? We are doing something well, about it. Well, then do it or let me go. That's exactly what we are doing, but there's no intention of letting you go. Well, at times they were aggressive and other times they'd cooled down. But uh, the, both the brains seemed to work together. They were twin brothers. And while you were interviewing one, you always had it at the back of your mind. The other one might have been in the cell, but he was talking to him as well. Do you know about robberies, Asta? Some of you mentioned a bit earlier. Yeah, you, you used to work there. You must right. know about those uh, robberies. No, I, I don't know anything about them. 1981 and 1982, two mm -hmm. robberies. No. A gun no, was no, used on I've, both I've, occasions. I've admitted. I've admitted all the other ones, all the other robberies, you, I've admitted that. OK, I've done that. I did those robberies, but I didn't do the one at Asda, and I knew nothing about that killing. You don't kill, but you'll roam around with loaded guns, doing bad. I don't kill anyone, man. It's not my style. I don't do it. We've got the flat cap. We've got the gun. The jobs you've done, the country gent jobs, you're wearing a, a flat cap. I wouldn't kill a You're roaming around with loaded guns, Richard. Put a wig on you and you're him, Richard. You'll fit perfectly. Being all about the robberies, you know what they were for. I wouldn't kill a copper. It's, I, I'm, I've... You've admitted all the armed robberies. I've told you I've done the robberies. There's very little difference between having a loaded gun and pulling the trigger. And if you've been cornered by a copper... No, it's not me, man. You've got the wrong man. It's not me. 